a very intense map between two game and Galores. But it's Galores who get the win on the map of Abyss with a 13 to 11. Welcome back, everybody. And Roy on this map, a map. Oh my God, we got to see the individuals play out. It was so back and forth between the two. The the late rounds that you wanted to talk about as well were something that guarantee who was gonna get the rounds, who was gonna get one or two in a row, and to see who was gonna close it out. That ends up being Galores. Yeah. Before I get into the late rounds, I just want to say uh, one quick statement. Luxo is him. He is actually him. He's a beast. But yeah, to, now to go back onto the late rounds, I do think there was a lot of late round situations that <laughs> could have gone either way. I think there was uh, so many scenarios that came down to just like people winning individual fights, people winning individual duels, having pop off moments. But I do have to say that the retakes for Galoris did look impeccable. They were clean and it was nice to see him lead because yeah, on, on the side of Galores, this is the, the kind of team that we, that we wanted to see. And to be honest, we were also not expecting a clean game between the two. They've played each other a few times in the past, but it, the, what really matters is how they were able to close it out on this map, especially in the last few rounds. Yeah, Galaris won the pistol and the second round, so they already had a four round advantage on both of the sides. So that right there just gave them a head start, but it still was a close game despite that. It was 13 11. And we just saw um, 2G going into the traps that Galaris had. And like Roy was saying, there was two players for me on Galaris that really shined. Luck show. I think 2G's plan needs to be to go after Luck. Luck shows dead, then you have more of a chance to win the round. <laughs> 27 and 14 yeah. as Cypher. Nasty. Insane. I mean, we talked about this guy yesterday and how, what he was doing on the Viper on Icebox. And I like that now he's having such a good performance because that is going to be our second map of today. We're heading into Icebox in a situation where we want to see if two game are able to push us to that third map. And it's a, it's a glorious that have had had some amazing instances they were able to get this map and it's a uh it's for a fact that um galores they need to win this match if they want to make it to playoffs so the stakes are there the players are, are there right we, we want to see how they're able and what they're able to do on icebox yeah i mean galores it's more like gallery okay because their retakes are an art and the fact the fact <laughs> is we're going into icebox Listen, yeah you like that one come on now come on that's <laughs> improv come on now but like uh, yeah, so the Icebox is a is like a post plan retake simulator, and they looked really good in those scenarios. And I'm honestly really not liking the foreshadowing for 2G here. And you are right, this match is very important for Galoris. They need this. They statistically and mentally, they need this win to have a real shot into playoffs, so that they're not depending on like RNG to qualify. So I was able to ask RKT from the Latin American broadcast how this is going to work. And it means uh, for Galoris to make it to playoffs, they need to win this match and the next match 100%. But that doesn't mean that they're in. It's going to depend on them and TSM, whether they win or lose. So once again, remind the Galoris they would like to take this win, especially if they're able to take it to all, as it's always been when they're facing two game. Now we get to jump into the Blacklight Agent Select, Emily, and we get to see these compositions that remain the same for both of the teams. Yeah. I, I like the Sage, and like you said, it's relatively the same that they've been playing for uh, with. For Icebox to be Galores' pick, I like this because they lost versus M80, a strong team, 11-13. But, like I said, they've got a good warm-up so far on Icebox, and they've been playing well so far. Is it going to be this as the history has told for Galoris to get once again a 2 all against 2 game? Or is 2 game going to be able to answer and get the first map win against Galoris for the first time since February? Let's find out with Gompers and Vance. Back into it again. Another game. Super, super excited. The last one, it, it, it took a turn in which, honestly, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know who was going <laughs> to run away from that, to be honest, fans. Yeah, and it could be something very similar going into this game, too, because uh, once again, if, if you're just tuned in now, this is probably like the third time that they're playing against each other on, on Icebox, where uh, the last two is 13 to 11 for Galoris this time around. We're already going live into this one, too, but going back into this one, there's been a compositional change for 2G. They used to play a Gecko on this one as well, and now switching Spike away from that role and taking the Initiator role. So I'm assuming that they're really trying to leverage Silence a little bit more in terms of map take that they want to take within the site. Starts off with an A-side hit, pivot towards that side. There's still a pop flash available. Silence still has his dash. Yeah. That's quick to take yellow control. We'll see what happens after that. 
silence left over. Black show. Playing on the Viper. Gonna be pretty good, honestly. Waiting to really utilize their own corporate knowledge to help out the team right now in this moment, especially now as the retake is gonna have to start wow. moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. All, and all of this is done off one Aldrone. You still save the flash and you still save the dash. This could be huge right now for the pulse fight for 2G. Nothing is gonna happen. This is nice. The wall goes up. It's pistol round. Who's gonna shoot through something like that? They can. The reload pops through. And it's a beautiful play already coming through a 2K to just finish everybody off. Yeah, but unfortunately, Galoris had somebody sticking on to that spike. So yeah, the shots were good for those that are pushing towards white and towards green to get denied there by Prize, who was playing that Sheriff. But that is also the difficult part here of playing against a Sage. The raid take wall so good at that point, where he played so passively. Look at him, all five of them holding back towards that spawn. And I thought if it wasn't going to be a pop flash to take control here towards yellow, it was potentially to time something to fight behind the Viper Wall and to flip Feeling to take control Eddie. of the back of the B-side so that you wouldn't have to fight against a Sage Wall. Unfortunately here, it's a Galoris easy, easy defuse. Now they have a lot of work with on that second round and it already rings Silent Falls. Stand down. Gonna fight out of the discomfort there. <laughs> okay, well... You know, Vandal in hand, too, is going to be so good for the next round. Because despite this being, okay, a save round for 2G, it, they can come back from the next one. I think your Ango in this moment is really looking towards the future. Satho is going to be able to take an easy shot, too. Body shot is all they need. And what's going to happen? Two flashes available. Oh, my gosh. The jiggle peak of a lifetime. Calls out the wall, too, so that it gives a chance for the rotate to happen for Dolores. This is not going to be easy at all. And... Yeah. Almost a minty flawless, but nonetheless a black life flawless for Galoris. Only evil kick got a little bit of damage done, but this is this is going to be an interesting portion here because they had to plant on that first round, and I saw a ghost being purchased by Spike on that second round, which then means the econ may not be the best depending what the it depends on what the rest of the team bought around that. But we just saw here before we got the shot on the stage that they still had enough economy to buy full shields. If not, it was going to be fairly dangerous here to play against, once again, Sato on the Outlaw. And that would have, once again, done some heavy damage, just like he did previously. That small shield is on the back of Prize because he has to invest in the KJ utility. Alarm bot, Nano Swarm, grouping up together, trying to play the Pulse Bind, hopefully effectively this time around. Oh, but there's so much back control. Look at, look at how inserted we are here on the defensive side. This is a huge read that he know the hits coming towards the A site. Whoa. Lots and lots of damage already made on Spike too. Rude, yes, they go down. But they can use the utility. They already have place. Too much of a detriment there, but unfortunately enough, it's not going to work. Already 4v2. And yeah, okay, we have a vandal. But... Oh, well, is that going to work? Galoris losing out on majority of their players and leaving your angle alone. Yes. Fight for themselves. The vandal shots hitting. Maybe they can be the clutch factor here. The 1v5 is going to be very difficult. Trying to keep the on low. Didn't see that? Yeah. I don't know if he had a left hand model issue potentially. Well, I know oh. on, on our POV we see right hand, but he could be playing left handed model where he couldn't see it as he was walking out. But nonetheless, I, I, I still like the attempt that they were trying to do here for Galoris. It looked like it was missed match but because yep. they had the sage inserted towards green pretty much towards the garage towards the b side they knew the hit was happening towards the a site they pulled the wall up you're trying to isolate the push coming in but unfortunately your shots just didn't land on your crossfire no trades were happened either on the side of galoris so ended up uh, being 2g really overrunning that three site hold on the crossfire and given a chance now for 2g all ready to fight back in round number four I can pull through with this. Seems like now, especially. Oh, Dark didn't make too much noise, though. Catching the reality. No luck shows there. But are they going to pick that fight? No, they're not. Back off to the side of the defense here. And a simple cut noise, re hit the site. There's that dash. It's actually expending the wall quite early. This is a big win so far for 2G. Although they have expended the wall already, they have to wait for a third wave for the fuel to come back and go for one last hit. 
But as they do that, Zass are using all of his shock darts. They do have one more nano to push back on that side. It's preemptive here. Once that smoke goes down, it does start the eruption, though. Actually, no smoke needed to go down because they are just wide swinging the angle and going up against players who can handle their own luck show. Making plays that could work and could save Galoris here in this moment, and they do. Sato, the one to clean it up for this 3 1. It was such a nice pop flash recall dart, being two players towards the snowman, but they ran through that with the spike. Yeah. And that just, I mean, you're, you're trying to run that and Luke Show's not bought anymore. You are not going to be able to fight against the whole back at Snowman with how Luke Show's been playing so far. And that's going to sting for sure. The whole first part, the first steps of getting into the site was perfectly played uh, by the attacking side of 2G. Like I said, they on the defensive side, they had to throw the wall right away. It got broken up. Less you to the hold here on the defensive side. And he understood here from the pistol round that they needed to activate more to fight back towards the spawn, but the Wincon was oh. making sure you play behind the wall, but yeah. Slight whiff on the shot there. That's going to be hurtful for the defense here from Galaris. They can't use the util that was placed down before. Actually, no, Resurrection settled down, so there is a potential planted. to come back from this. Oh. They lose another player in the process, though. Hero Rifle for uh, LZ allows now Silence to pick up a rifle, too. Beautiful KO ult to not allow any early util, but it allows all of Galoris to move up. Yeah, losing that left show is big important, too, because now they can't use the smoke for the retake. They have to watch every single angle. Flash comes out in the ult. Maybe they can just destroy them, but they can't 2G. Stuck in various positions. That was a great start, though, by LZ. The hero rifle to sneak up and get that surprise kill to start things off. On to Rude. And then 2G is able to convert here a lower buy. Dude, there's something about these wipers on this map from Brazil that understands such good timing so far. Again, it's luck show yesterday against M80. Today, it seems to be LZ on this first flashed in a pan, and we'll have to now keep an eye on him to see if this is going to be consistent. Because he definitely needed those type of plays to give a little bit of breathing room back for 2G because they were letting a couple of these macro plays in the post plan slip th since the beginning of this uh, of this map. Cryos with the op is not something I thought I would see either. Uh, but a pickup from him could mean anything. Watching towards A, waiting for the push to happen. Nice shot off Luxo Ooh. actually off the start, so that's a good first engagement to take in. Unfortunately, can't really collect anything else from that. And yeah, Root stuck in bad, bad positioning. That's what we wanted to see. Jump spot two, baiting out the Planted. overextension and the shot of Root. A lot of the back swing here from LZ, and now an easy plant. Not much to work with here on the retake. Not sure if uh, Sato has his Bladestorm activated does here we're going to commit to the site to do some econ damage and the nade does settle back oh he missed well, can they do it okay is this there finally with a 4k slowly moving themselves forward and blade storm is it up to sato but 1v3 in time of the essence yeah absolutely no way honestly at this point all there is to hide and that they are not going to do actually sap cleans it up nice and easy that would have been so nice as well. They throw up the wall so that everybody stays towards green and white, and then you're trying to updraft from pipes to get some Bladestorm shots right down the line. And you know Sato's good for those when he's able to float, being very accurate on those. But unfortunately, with that miss, it boils up the whole plan. And one costly mistake, though, that allows 2G to really come back into this game. 3-3 three, three scoreline so far. Yeah. Okay. Actually, big appreciation on the lineup there. They just held off on that angle for a while. He got shot right away too, though. Oh, yeah. So they know there's at least one player anchored up towards orange, Power towards kitchen. Oh, man. And Hunter Siri now making his way too. 
But the pressure's being made. They, they, nobody's really playing off of that. Instead, maybe just looking for some sort of damage, but isolation, not there. <laughs> Yuranga broke his angles dropping down, so he's forcing the heal on himself. That's <laughs> unlucky. So they won't have a heal if there's actually a, a post plant scenario where they have a couple of trades coming up back on the lower side. So 2G has a silver lining here on the attempt at the execution towards this A site. Oh no, the hair was seen. They know Yuranga's oh on the wall. They actually know how to fight this, though. Never mind. Already making it so much more difficult. Wall breaks down in silence now has to fight for everything else but the 3k from spike it makes it somewhat easier welcome to my world. hit on top of 410 spike i think will have to play behind so he watches the back of maze and they'll do that yeah okay nice shot already luck show oh my god if there's one there's the other and uh you know i respect the spray down yeah, I mean, L Luxo plays the Viper, so if he sees a pit like that, he knows I potentially <laughs> know where these players are at. Let me just go and spray, and he gets both of them. And that, you, you mentioned it, they saw that ponytail, but I think they still thought that Yurongo was staying on the top of 410. Oh, yeah. So as they're focused on that spot, he goes onto the wall, catches one off guard, and that's Spite that gets picked off. And then it allows here, again, uh, uh, enough commotion for the rotate to happen from the B side and for Luxo to do what Luxo does best. Another casual, easy 2k. Out. Get out of my way! Oh, which they can play with this. They hear the blade storm coming through the dash already, and yeah, big run behind from Luxo. Does not want to play into the angle of this one. Yeah, missed the pop flash too, unfortunately, so... Try to time it out for an updraft, getting some space towards main while blinding some players within the site with a recon and a flash play. Still gets a timing though. Oh, that was close. Still huge potential too. Uh, I mean, either way, yeah, fight already commencing here as well. Is was just waiting. Kind of maybe catch out a rotation and that they did. 2G, now they leave this one before come into action and so many ultimates left to use for the next round as well so regardless of whether or not they even have the economy they're they're pretty well settled for the next couple rounds for 2g yeah they jumped across almost got caught there by rude at least it's information there they also cycle an ult orb for zap so despite again the couple rounds that, that slipped done. through their fingers on how they played their post plans for for 2g on this b site and how they try to take control of b site yeah they're still able to Make sure that they understand the protocols and the state of their game and the state of their situation in terms of old economy and economy overall. To still have some good fight here in this game. Remember, this has always been map that went the distance between these two teams. Decided in the 24th round. Change of composition coming out from 2G. And Spike trying to find, con trying to continue, sorry, to find value out of pot flashing to support silence. It hasn't really worked out yet. But at least him as a KO and an old command has definitely done a lot here to try to prevent a fast flood retake coming out from the defensive side. I think at this point, this is probably like the third null command already available for Spike in this half. That's done. It could possibly be, man. Look at that. I like that teamwork still intact. Hope's high. Overall, I do like, you can definitely see the, the attitude differential here with the seriousness that Galaris are really putting into the game. Of course, 4 4 is the best case scenario to be in, but right now, there it goes. Managed to make something happen. I love these ranked type of plays because you're able to find a great timing usually just running it down with a Bucky. Unfortunately, his first shot didn't connect, but still gets one for his troubles. Spike planted. Set it down. So that's good. Right now, they don't have to too much attention to anything. If any, the only fear that they should have is Sato somewhat popping off somehow, somewhere, right there where it's gonna be. Maybe looking for another headshot. And there goes Sato, maybe the saving grace for the game. 2v2. You should run. Weapon could be picked up if they do manage to deny this, but how they know they can win the fight, the oh 1v1, no. the wall there as well. It makes it so much more difficult for Price. Halfway through, the wide swing is huge, and Sato just Wait. takes it. No. Actually, still done in half, so I think they... This might be it. Whoa. This is he's the okay, turnaround okay. that I didn't he's think okay, of. Yeah. Okay. He's okay. I was like, 
Wait, Santel, you're still just a little, you're still in the old here. <laughs> but uh, but thankfully there was still enough time. <laughs> that would have been crazy. But just looking at this Black Knight replay, that small recon guard that pings all three of them again. It's the Sage Wall that forces the hand of how 2G's playing the Pulse Plant. Yes, they had Nano Swarms on top, all broken by a Shock Dart or preemptively popped. The Snake Bite's only going to do so little. If you're at 100 HP, you're still going to defuse. So these guys have to activate and continuously push and fight against Galores here. Thankfully... Well, not even thankfully. They even lost a round, right? They, it was yep. won here by Galores overall. That is it. Honestly, a huge turnover. You give, a, you give a duelist a gun and tell him to go shoot, and guess what happens? Yeah, I see uh, chat saying, yeah, you could break the wall. Yeah, I agreed. Agreed. <laughs> But when you're also breaking the wall, you're also forcing to reload right after, right? You're having yeah. two, three guys trying to spray that wall, and you see how fast Galoris are moving across yellow as soon as the wall gets popped up. Yeah. So they are already ready to fight back as soon as the wall breaks. Yeah. And you're catching some players potentially on reloads or whatnot. So it, it's still very difficult right now for 2G to, to play these pulse plants. You got to push. Yeah. Also with that, the going to have to... Spike Allow down. that on B. To set in. I don't even know what I'm saying. The recoil to set in, but yeah, there goes Galore. 30 seconds left. Already taken out majority on the side of 2G, which was uh, pretty, pretty frank to begin with. I feel like they're on that last half. Galore's definitely knowing how to defend the B side at this point now, knowing that it's. Found them. Killed my bot. I mean, the most inquired on the side of 2G, but yeah, watch the line. Can they take off shots? Oh, no, you cannot. Absolutely not. Black Leg Flawless coming in for Galore. Easy one, two, one sneak by being thrown by Luxo from Snowman. Pushes two players vulnerable right into <laughs> Orange and they, they got dismantled. Look at that, again, look at that util to answer back when whenever this wall is coming up. Aljon clears, they fight information, they have the util at the right spots. Then they also have the Sage coming back on the rotate. I think what's missing a lot here is is not necessarily the, the mid control, but it's a default that allows for you to activate a little bit more on an extremity. Because, again, I feel like I'm watching All Knights versus Zareta one more time where <laughs> yeah. everybody is just focused on one end of the map and just focus and just continuing on that side. And yes, they've had some mid lurks that's been denied, but we haven't really seen a look of like a Viper or KJ trying to work the extremities mm -hmm. when you're adding so much noise on the B side of the map that the KJ could activate, trying to win your 1v1 towards the A site and then pivot back. Like the the, the good old standard icebox uh, to be played, right? They've been very one-dimensional. We could fight back because we have a KO and we could pop flash for these fights against, against Galores. But quite frankly, one, they haven't. And two, they haven't been holding the pulse plants because of those scenarios. So, or you're, you're trying to activate some faster lurks on the flanks in the pulse plants or default work a little bit more slowly and have those the have your your lurkers your your kj your viper uh, activate on the other side of the map and it seems to be the case now because they had this viper wall up they're putting the orb on the middle they're still wall up at the same time both initiators on that side with the jet now finally meeting up with them because maybe somebody didn't listen to what the coach was saying and then now you finally have prize trying to work towards this a side but this is a lore buy that 2g has Oh, slow. That's great. They... Honestly, either way, it didn't matter. They're going to get a free pick off here, too, with this double player push. Oh, they're looking for a big fight to come through. Not really this caring is... who's there. And it was a hero rifle on that side, too, that could have made a difference. Yeah. And I, I, the idea was there, except you actually jumped in to break the darts. You already gave your position away. So now when there's an Allen drone and a triple player clearing you, what, what can you really do? Except you call the audible and you're now flipping the map towards spawn. I like that answer from 2G. Spike Toxin screen down. Turret soon indication as to where some of these players might be. But there it goes, already just underneath. Turret goes down now, especially with Spike's util. And they have to try to fight this one back. Lockdown oh. is going to be good, but the, the question is how good? You still have Zap looking for blood. 
Oh, it's good. No, but yeah, moving outward. Actually, this reposition might be better. It's over. Oh, yeah. There's no way you're catching up to this one. They you're going to have to make so much noise. It's going to get hurt. It's defused. Uh, that just one lockdown being placed by Rude in the right spot in Kitchen. They flip the map and it's like, Last oh, yeah, I forgot. I have a lockdown. You guys are all screwed. <laughs> so, yeah, nice, nice little uh, back and forth that we went from read to read. But uh, again, I would have appreciated a little bit more patience coming out from Prize at the beginning of this round. Or he gave his position away here towards the A side. So one more round to hold on to here. So they muffled the back. No way. Just a little bit for 2G. Glorious. Again, running off that high on the last game of running away with it. But yeah, Hunter Fury really isn't putting too much pressure into this. If anything, the defense oh. moving up closer and closer to try to eliminate any sense of space taking. It's four players there. Yeah. Just because they knew it was going to be some sort of a battle, the KJ is the one finding information with passive utility, and now Gordon for the flank. Now when they took it down, they know okay. Sapp goes up above, just hopping the angles down, but they do go down. I have the enough. LZ is going to be able to retrieve it, but now the spike dropped. And finding a way ball. to take it, but the flank is there. They don't know Root is there, but the timing is perfect. They finally find another... And it's a 1v3 at this point. So isolate the fight, find something from it, but you can't glory, it's just too good. Your duty is not over. 8 4 to end the half. And it's got to be something about regional matches. It, it just feels like the that second seed is just not looking like that strong team that goes in as the underdog. You know, Roy talked about underdog and overdogs in this tournament so far, and you can't really coin one on any of these teams. Even if M80 is currently three in zero so far, they had to fight for those victories. Most recently here uh, against 2G and Galoris. But now they have their yeah, and now they have their own regional matchup against TSM. Who TSM on that end though, in 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 the America in North America rather, was able to dethrone any of those top teams except for M80. So this, these are all nice little storylines that we're currently seeing in these regional matchups today. We're now going toe-to-toe -to -toe in each region. That number one seed definitely shines against their opponents locally. And they, they have the perfect reads. They have the perfect plays. And the ones that are the underdogs, that number two seed, again, feel very one-dimensional. I mean, too, like, Laris, they're they're literally just begging for a win at this point. They just want yeah. one. They don't care when or how they're going to get it. They have a win. They have yeah. one win that they do not want to let go on that last map. And that's that. Like, they, they you can see it. The, the disappointment in their faces from the M80 game. And, it, it, again, like, it, it really did feel like a fire had been ignited into this team. So I think... For sure. All in all, 2G, all, all Galores is thinking is you've had your turn. It's it's ours now. <laughs> and they have the chance to stay with this, right? Dan Dry was mentioning they have to win these two games. It depends what happens with the TSM game as well. Yeah. And they might be able to squeeze through. It also depends what happens to the other teams too. But uh, apologies as well. When I said M80's games, they won against Galores very close. And the other ones were against Eretta and All Knights, of course. That's where we saw the, the potential of what All Knights could bring here in this tournament. And now it's looking to be anybody's game so far to guarantee a playoff spot outside of M80 where it's almost guaranteed. If not already guaranteed as they're 3-0. But we're starting this piss around. Nano Storm to break the turret on the top of Boiler. That's being thrown for Galoris. So already from the get-go, from the very beginning, you're seeing a change of uh, a different approach of Galoris that works the map without having to show their bodies. That allows them to potentially split into this A site. Already prepared for this pistol round, knowing that 2G needs to get some sort of takedown. And that's exactly what they do. The mid side, getting early information and also gathering those early picks. So you do have the Viper and the Sentinel down. Spike Boy, that's a great start now for 2G.
have one flash to work with for Spike. Yeah. No, they're gonna run it down now. Now at this point, they could make yes, something satisfactory happen with the Walrus. They are trying to get the right clicks in, and around oh that should have been one out by 2G originally is, is just gone. That is a 3v5, and, and you're letting your KO be the one to break the, the, the recon. Maybe somebody else could have done it, so he has his pop flash ready, so they could actually activate right after and not waste that extra second. He didn't even break it. He even got pinged on top of that. But it definitely showed, for to, to at least to kick things off for Galoris, that there was a, a little bit of miscoms on how they peeked down towards middle. I, I respect that they're trying to go for the 3-2-1 swing outside of the Viper Orb uh, on the extremities. But when you're doing that on that end, you're still exposing only one player on a 1v1 towards Boiler, which started well for Zap to get those two kills, those two dual wins. But by God, did that retake was not the retake of the century there for 2G. Not the time, nor the place. 2G can't seem to fight the resolve against Galoris, but Galoris, they're looking to fight a little bit more. They're, they're, they're instigating right now on the A site. Early, early darts coming through. It's so difficult right now in 2G's position because you're not playing the side that allows for you to plant and get some money in. So you can't, you're trying to invest and try to get some dubs here and trying to bring it back into your favor. But if you're losing this round, invest in these shares, invest in the marshal. Your economy, you're just going to battle against that the whole time if you're not landing these shots for the rest of the half. Oh my gosh. Right there. 30 seconds Already left. done with. There's no damage made onto Galaris. Oh, so. No. Walls already settled down over towards A. There's no retake potential in this moment. If anything, they're looking for one. They were fighting for their lives for one. And unfortunately, I don't like that. Four players stacked towards the A side. You had the yeah. great spot at default first, and you decide to pivot towards yellow to hopefully get that one and done, but you lose that spot and you lose all map control. Yeah. Because now with this wall up and the Sage wall, how do you Just really try to get the information of who's really Here. playing behind that Viper wall? Are they playing more forward or not? So now you have to scale up more slowly for 2G for the retake. And then at this rate, it's probably just die to spike. You can't you can't allow Galoris to pick up any alt orbs right after here with how that first round went down. Oh my god, and you're giving more orbs to Lug Show. <laughs> if anything. If anything, I, it's yeah. Chover. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for hope. I was looking for hope. <laughs> nope. Oh my gosh. Aw, oh, that's so nice. And it, it, oh, it's so nice to see smiles on their faces from last time because they were pretty upset with themselves, like, yeah, over their performance. So I think that's another thing too. Like, finally, actually seeing the things that you've worked on for so long come into fruition in your game, it, it's like a, it's such an enlightening feeling. It definitely. And, and all kidding aside, it's not, it's not to harp here on, on these, uh, on these number two seeds, but the regional matchups you can definitely see here because of the amount of reps that these teams are getting against each other. They, they, the number one seed seems to always have such a good read against everybody. Power's out. Dang. Seems like 2G is having good reads against everybody too right now, which is the way that it needs to go. Because if not, like you said, it's Jover. Uh, this is the round they really do need to bring back and bring back they can't. Lock Show is not somebody you want to play around with. This is dangerous though. I, I do mean, not like how there's a spike planted. There's a big just split between both players here. That's what I'm seeing. Oh, oh my, oh no. Good. Okay. We're good. All good. Maybe it works. No, it may does not. And there's no trade-off so there either. Exactly. Look at where all the X's are here across the map on this A site for the defensive side. Yes, it started off well with a one pick or first blood, but then everything else is, I'm going to try to do a hero play. I'm going to try to hero swing. Uh, Spike tried to swing through a Viper uh, a Viper wall on the defensive side to try to, uh, to pick some players off. And while that Viper wall would have been everything here to allow the two players to turtle up in the back of the site so that you could actually activate that flank in the pulse plant or at least a crossfire or delay enough so you can set up a crossfire within the a site would have been 
probably a, a, a good thing to do here on the defensive side for 2G. But that's what I'm trying to get to is when you're watching these regional matchups, it just you just see the disparity or discrepancy and, and the gap here between that number one team and that number two team. The, the exact same thing happened earlier on today between Dreta and All Knights, and it's just going to repeat here against Galorius and 2G, and we'll see if it repeats against TSM and M80. It's, I, I agree with that, honestly. And it's also like, it, they're put in this, these, these positions. The number one rule is, okay, if you're put in that position, fine. But also think critically when you are, but don't be put in that position in the first place. And I think they just continue to allow themselves to be so uncomfortably, like, brutally beaten down by Kaloris because they're not, they're not thinking... Not, not that they're not thinking about the actions they're gonna they're gonna like push forward and and whatnot. It feels like a lot of the time they're constantly looking for these like early first engagements. But again, they're they're still not working as a team to get them. It's there's no cohesion on the defense to push outward aggressively on ice block, and it feels so uncomfortable. Yeah, and the first time they have a good economy to work with in this second half, that happened, right? These individual swings and in plays to. Everybody feeling that because you're trailing behind by so far, everybody has to activate and, and be that player and not stay within the protocols of what could work in your favor to bring the comeback in the first place. You see, and you see because of that, the, what happened here on, on that buy of the Marshall and the Sheriffs and whatnot, the, the, the economy is not the best here. Four Sheriffs and a Bulldog trying to fight back on a five versus five retake. Now you're just wasting bullets trying to break a wall with Sheriffs. Enemy oh, that wall is so well placed too. That small little insert allows Sato to to play area. more aggressively and also just control the site. And the site control is huge. Tremendous even right there, of course, yes. Spike manages to get the headshot, but you can't do anything. Just because of luck show, everybody else watching through the, the, the select crevices, the cracks, and waiting on the outskirts. But match point that we match finally point. do get to reach here. And a possibility for Galaris to run off with that first series win. And the last efforts to fight back now in this game for 2G. Map point, serious point coming out now for Galoris, where, again, unfortunately, it's not looking too good on how they're trying to work the defensive side now for, uh, for 2G. Five. Off at least comes out for silence. Not at the right spot to start. Galoris is they trying to just work out. for a B site hold. Or a B site push, rather. Poison's off. I think the knife might have hit some players here to get some information. So that forces the rotate over from Prize to help out. And I like this change. You're not trying to overcommit to try to run back towards yellow. Okay, as I say that, he does it. <laughs> Poison's off. Okay, there we go. We're, we're fine. <laughs> your, your weak site here, your soft site now on the B site. So try to fall back for a bit. Make sure that you hold this area now so that the rest of your team can rotate across. I mean, it works. They learned from their mistake before of just being isolated out in the open. Which, how is this gonna really occur for, for 2G when you do still have Sato reaching around? But around the back, dude, the timing is insane! The smoke is up, and that allows a somewhat of an escape to come through from Sato. Hunter Fury trying to make its way through, of course. Yeah, okay, Sato goes down, and now that leaves some sort of elimination 3v3 situation somewhat see oh. things starting to work its way back around 2G. Wanting this victory for themselves. But the shot start making damage. And the Viper gets the love. The decay there. It can happen. And it does the simple clutch to finish everything off for Galoris to win this out. That first victory feels immaculate. And the last two rounds, uh, you got to gift it to Sato for sure. When they broke the wall, the defensive side of the lower by a, a, a slit comes through the wall, he gets the first blood in the pick and making it very difficult there for 2G to come back. This last round right there, both players had to anchor that B site and lock down that area so the teammates could rotate. Sato, again, sticking the wheel, not allowing the gears to turn here to uh, allow 2G to come back for a retake. And it's been from A to Z, from the mid rounding, from the pulse plants, just in favor of Galoris this whole series. And this is a great start, finally. Some some resurgency coming out now for Galoris that looks much cleaner 
than their opening games, but also looking with a victory to build that confidence and try to come back here in the, the potential race for playoffs, right? They were 0-3. They're now 1-3. They have to win these next two games. And now even their last game now to try to stay alive uh, and, and have a chance here to make it to playoffs because they were the most dominant team in their region, but they haven't had a chance to show that right now in the Ascension playoffs. This was... Honestly, like the most intense battleground. And I, I feel like Valoris definitely held their own very, very incredibly. Honestly, it felt like they never felt, it never looked tense when you were looking at the cameras. It felt like at every single point in time, at every single moment, they were, they were well put together. They were mm -hmm. well, they, there was never any mental despair like we got to see on the opposing side two game. It, it, it crumbled not only mentally, but mechanically every single time on Icebox. And maybe it yeah. was just the home ground that was so comfortable with, with the side of, of obviously the, the opposing side, but for, for Galoris, yeah, okay, Icebox is comfortable, but you can't be solo peaking angles. You can't, you, you know, work the way that you did. And I feel like they're definitely going to learn from that. It could have just been a very tense moment today. Oh, for um, sure, for sure. Yeah. But, it's a great start, right? Because like you said, if, if if you're looking at the cameras for Galoris' side, where they went 0-3, going into this game 0-3 so far in their record, and they win it very confidently and convincingly, and you're seeing the, the relief right after, they looked very calm, but there was a lot of pressure for them to perform and to perform adequately. And I think they, you, they might, it might give them that to what was needed here to have a deep run now in the Ascension. No, oh, absolutely. But of course we have an analyst desk to break it down for you guys. So that's it for me and Van Silly. We'll see you guys later. Analyst, back to you. That's a way to keep the playoff chances alive for the side of Galoris. Domination on Icebox Roy is what we got to see. A 13 to 4. And let the cat talk. I want to see what <laughs> I want to know what the cat has to say. Uh, come over here. I'll tell you. Hold on. Look, show, he's insane. Sato, he's insane. Oh, there he is. He has spoken. <laughs> yeah, and he's right. And he's right. That cat has never been wrong. Not one time. Only facts being said here on the analyst desk. <laughs> But what do you think about this whole uh, map of Icebox, though? Because, uh, I mean, we've talked about these teams. Mm -hmm. We we talked about these matches getting close and going to the third map, but it was actually quite the opposite. It was domination for Galoris once again. And since February, he continues to be this two game, unable to get a, a single map away from them. Yeah, and I, I think at some point in this in the second map, it was a really even battle between these two teams. Like, the, it was neck to neck. The, all the scenarios were coming down to just like these really tight situations again. But at some point towards the end of that first half, it really did feel like Galoris had their number. They, something clicked. They had some kind of read into the way they were playing, into the way they were approaching the map. And it just felt like they were just winning round after round after round. And Emily, are, are we surprised by this, Galoris? I feel like instead of surprise, we have this feeling of they're back. They're finally back. They're finally able to <laughs> figure out the things that were going wrong in the first couple of matches to now have a chance to make it to playoffs. And I mean, it's not going to be easy. It depends on not only their results for that last match against Reta, but it also depends on how TSM does. So it's not the easiest thing to do, but at least it's nice to see this Galoris get some success. I feel like uh, Galoris' match records for this group stage hasn't been doing them justice. All of their games have been really close. A lot of them even went to OT or 13-11. So this is the win that they definitely needed and they still prove that they're very dominant in their region as well. And again, for this map on Icebox, they, went, they won both pistols and the second round. They had a four round advantage early on. So they're two for two for doing that and hats off to them sato was not afraid to go in there and get the openers for his team yeah i completely agree with em as well like th these losses that gellerus was taking were all completely close and it was just a matter of time before they got some wins with the with their individual form right because the sato and and Luxo have been the top of the scoreboard every single game they finished the top yeah. every single time they just they're alternating they're like kobe and Shaq. they're just just patching it off to each other. Ah, right, you top frag. Right, I got the next map. Okay, you got this one. Like they're just literally just passing it off. Like they're they're crazy. So it was just a matter of time before they got some wins. It, it was a matter of time, and and like you guys were saying, it, the score that they had before this zero and three 
doesn't really make them justice because they are such an insane team. And we've seen it not only in the matches that they played in Brazil, but we've seen it in Ascension. It just seems like there have been some unlucky scenarios that they had to deal with to be able to close it out. Um, but for one last one last point here before we send to a break into the interview, Emily, we've had both of the number one seeds so far get the wins for that next dun, dun, match dun. of M80 and TSM. <laughs> <laughs> What are we feeling? <laughs> you had to ask me. Um, I gotta look at the history. I think that this is gonna be a really big rival match and very fun to watch. I think that M80 is still gonna pull through, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that that is just a little bit of the teaser for the last and banger match that we have is an M80 that has been undefeated so far. They're three and zero and a TSM that needs to get those wins as well, trying to uh, end up positive and make it to playoffs. So let's find out how that plays out. We're going to send it to a break. We have an interview on this Brazilian matchup and then we'll move into the NA matchup. 